What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250-plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM, FM dial nearest you, plus ESPN Radio and Sirius XM Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up, as always, is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. The Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by mycomputercareer.edu. Training for a better life. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Lots of stuff to get into today. Lots of NBA action, some NFL action to get into. Le'Veon Bell will be an unrestricted free agent. Antonio Brown is on the trading block. We'll talk about those things, of course. NBA action. LeBron James says, get your seat belts. Put, buckle up your seat belts. Here I come. Usually I have to wait. There's a little delayed reaction in terms of amping up the intestinal, the intensity. But I can't do that anymore. Lakers, losers of four of their last five, five of their last seven. Reeling as we speak. The end of All-Star Weekend has, has, has arrived. The beginning of the stretch run of the NBA season is here. LeBron James is saying, here I come. I am in L.A. tonight. I will be at the Lakers-Rockets game. Uh, we will talk about that as the show progresses a little bit later on in this show. And, of course, Jalen Rose, former member of the Fab Five, now NBA analyst extraordinaire for ESPN. He will be on the show with yours truly at the top of hour number two. So I'm looking forward to all of that. And we'll continue that with the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Let me get right to the story of the day. And that is Zion Williamson. <clears throat> Believe it or not, one could argue that he's top three in terms of the biggest stories in all of sports this season. He's the face of college basketball this year. He's the face of college basketball. It's Zion Williamson and it's everybody else. He's on a number one ranked team in the nation. He's a star averaging 21 and 8 for them, even though he's not the leading scorer on the team. That would be R.J. Barrett. Uh, he's clearly in line to win the Wooden Award. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on with Zion Williamson. But last night, just 36 seconds into what I consider to be the best rivalry in all the sports. I mean, bigger than Michigan-Ohio State football. Bigger than any pro matchup you can think of. I think the greatest rivalry in all of sports is Duke versus North Carolina basketball. Because usually it's not a lopsided contest. Usually it's a thriller. It's coming down to the wire. It doesn't matter whether that's at Dean Dome or at Cameron Indoor Stadium. It does not matter. Last night the game was at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Last night the former president of the United States, number 44, Barack Obama, was in the house. Ken Griffey Jr., Hall of Famer, was in the house. Producer and director extraordinaire Spike Lee was in the house. Guess what? The game ain't that damn important if Zion Williamson ain't there. It's just not. But last night was a special kind of environment, nationally televised, ESPN. Everybody was waiting for this game. And 36 seconds into the matchup, Zion Williamson, right foot, Awkwardly bounced off the hardwood two or three times. Loses control control of his left footing. His feet shreds the sneaker, which is not a good look for Nike. By the way, not a good look for Nike. It shreds the sneaker. He goes down with a knee injury. He exits the game. He does not come back. Needless to say, the Carolina, North Carolina Tar Heels, led by Roy Williams, who, by the way, is phenomenal, and I'll get into that in just a second. Ride the coattails of a 30-15 and 15 performance from this some no-name named Luke May. Okay? 30-15. and 15. And it offsets 33 points from Jar J. Barrett. It offsets 27 points from Cam Reddish, who, by the way, can ball. And Duke loses the game because once Zion Williamson went down with 36 seconds left, they never recovered. Duke didn't know what to do with itself because you were thinking he was just going to go to the bench and come back in, and then suddenly you found out he wasn't coming back. They just seemed a bit rattled. 
They turned it to a single-digit game at times, but North Carolina was able to hold them off. Movement without the basketball, spreading the floor adroitly, interior passing. Convenient perimeter shooting, you name it, they handled their business. And so now all of that stuff, because Ion Williams was in the back, in the locker room, and his parents and family members and loved ones were with him, and he was watching the game, and now the speculation is, should Zion Williamson sit out the rest of this college basketball season and just make sure he's healthy for the NBA draft and ultimately to take on a career in the National Basketball Association that could potentially make him hundreds of millions of dollars? Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's two lines of thinking here, and I want everybody to understand where I'm coming from. It's very important that everybody gets this. And when y'all get an opportunity, please do me a favor and put me up on ESPN News because I like to see myself. As beautiful as Maria Taylor is and the great work that she does for us, I like to see myself on TV when I'm talking like this. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something that's incredibly important for you to understand. There's a, a, a difference to distinguish here. If you are saying that Zion Williamson won't be 100%, anytime soon and playing could potentially jeopardize him and as a result he shouldn't play again for Duke University and instead what he should do is wait to be the number one overall pick or at least a top two or three pick worst case scenario in the upcoming NBA draft and you're basing it on the injury that took place last night and the fact that he may not be the same I got no issues I have no issues. Here's where I have an issue. And it's respectfully in a very fun-loving way to guys that I absolutely love and Scottie Pippen and Tracy McGrady, who've both been on the jump with, with Rachel Nichols for ESPN and actually are on right now. Let me tell you something that I have a problem with. Weeks ago, both of them, Scottie Pippen and Tracy McGrady, two Hall of Famers, were of the mindset that Zion Williamson, 100% healthy, no injuries whatsoever, should call it quits in the middle of the season and say, I'm not playing anymore. I'm getting myself ready for the NBA draft. I think that is an absolute travesty. That is a disgusting thought process. And Hall of Fame caliber players and a six-time champion like Scottie Pippen should be ashamed of his damn self. I say it affectionately because Scottie's my man. Now, obviously, my man is ultimately black. It's MJ himself. Please don't get me wrong. There's levels to this. But I got respect for Scottie Pippen. And I appreciate his greatness, his knowledge about the game of basketball and what he accomplished on the basketball court. And considering what he did on both ends of the floor, I have no problem with him being recognized as one of the 50 greatest players in the history of the National Basketball Association because he was that lethal defensively. And offensively, he was respectable. But let's be very, very clear about what I'm saying. For any champion, for any elite athlete, to advertise or to promote the thinking that it is okay for you to quit on your team in the middle of the damn season because you want to look ahead to the NBA draft, I think is egregious. It's just egregious. Now, I'm not talking about injuries now because if you're looking at it from last night and you're like, look, man, he don't need to be jeopardizing anything more. I got that. But I'm talking about what they said weeks ago when Zion Williamson was 100% healthy. This dude is not playing for Drexel, y'all. And even then I would have a problem with it. But I bring up that point. He ain't playing for Drexel or Hofstra or Pepperdine or somebody like that. No disrespect. This brother is playing for Duke University. Mike Krzyzewski, the number one ranked team in the nation who are favorites to win a national title. 
and you got champions on a pro level going on national TV saying, hey, man, don't worry about playing. Just quit. Don't even worry about it. It's no big deal. You got to make your money, earn your millions. Stop. First of all, understand these players like of his caliber, they got insurance policies out there that will net them $100 million if they were to get hurt. Let's, let's make sure we take care of that, okay? Zion Williamson ain't on a basketball court worried about losing, losing everything and going broke. He gets hurt, and it costs him a career. You best believe the university and he himself have taken out insurance policies that's going to net him tens, if not even over $100 million. So let's make sure we get that out the way. Now, that's still considerably less than what he has the potential to make as an NBA player, and I understand that. But he's going to get paid. That's number one. Number two, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Y'all ever heard of teamwork? Y'all ever heard of team? There might be an I and win, but there's no I and team. I don't have any problem with Zion Williamson not showing up to Duke, sitting out the year with this bogus 19-year-old or one year removed from high school rule before entering the NBA that the NBA has conveniently implemented. They should get rid of that rule tomorrow. Players should be allowed to come straight out of high school into the pros if they have the capability to do so, period. And the rule is unjust because it essentially – and unintentionally, unintentionally, I might add, because I certainly am not accusing the NBA of malicious intent in this regard, but the rule is essentially discriminatory. If I got to be 19 years of age or one full year removed from high school before I'm allowed to enter the NBA draft, that rule is not applicable to European players, to players from Europe. That rule is not applicable to them. Luka Doncic could have came over here as a 17 or 18 year old. Frank Nielakina could have done the same thing. Rudy Gobert, if he was younger and wanted to, he could have done the same thing, assuming he's from France. Tony Parker's still in the league. He could have done the same thing. These European players, these players that come over from Europe don't have to be a year removed from high school. These rules don't apply to them. So why should it apply to individuals, primarily African-American individuals, over here in the States? That's not right. That's not right. And something needs to be done about that, and that rule needs to be changed. Now, this ain't about black and white. It's about green, for those of you who may not understand. It's about green because the longer it takes for you to come into the NBA, combine with the two-year deal you signed, and then combine that with the two additional years that the team has control of your rights, you're essentially talking anywhere from five, six, and potentially seven years that you are under the control of one team which provides ownership in the National Basketball Association with some degree of cost control and cost certainty. So instead of giving out three max deals, for example, you might only end up giving up two. And as a result, it saves you money down the line. which basically makes it better and easier for you to own a team. We got that. We got that. But the flip side to it is that if not discriminatory, it's at the very least unfair because the players from America are primarily black and the players from Europe are not. That's the way I look at it. I'm not accusing anybody of malice intent or anything like that. I'm saying the fact that these questions are propped up, you got to do something about it. But getting back to Zion Williamson, let's be very, very clear. If he were to sit out now because he got hurt last night, I'm not hating on that. What I'm hating on is this man playing basketball, wreaking havoc, being 100% healthy, 
and you got champions advocating that he just quit on his team in the middle of the season. Your point has been proven. That's what you do as a teammate? So I'm R.J. Barrett. I'm Cam Reddish and these boys. I'm Trey Jones and these boys. And, oh, guess what? All right, look, bye. See y'all when I see y'all. Like my man Max Kellerman said, peace. That's the difference between me and him. Peace. Because he ain't thinking about nobody, no damn body else but himself. I'm telling you what he said on first take this morning. I'm thinking differently than that. I'm trying to, I'm going to make a decision beforehand. All right, I could be the number one overall pick if I go to the collegiate level and prove myself for at least half a season. I'm not doing that. I'm all in or I'm all out. I'm either going to show up and commit myself to that one year to the end, barring injury, or I'm not showing up at all. I'll risk not being the number one overall pick, and instead I'll be a top five or a top seven pick. That's what I'm doing. What I wouldn't do is arrive at Duke, have all the attention, all the attention garnered in my direction, the program's direction. We walk around here. We run over people the first five, six games of the season before we run into Gonzaga. I'm a highlight reel, dunking like I'm the second coming of LeBron at 6'7", 285, with a 47-inch vertical leap. I do all of that. I set the basketball world on fire. I got an all that acclaim, all that attention. I got the Wooden Award looking at me. I got an All-American panel looking at me. I got a national championship in my view. I got the great Mike Krzyzewski coaching me. I got teammates who will be pros in R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish. And I tell everybody to kick rocks because I'm going to sit out and protect myself in the middle of the damn season. That's not what we should be teaching our athletes, ladies and gentlemen. It's not what we should be about. We should stand for more than that. And I don't understand how anybody, especially a six-time champion like Scottie Pippen, could ever advocate that. Or a Hall of Famer like Tracy McGrady, I might add, who came straight out of high school into the pros in his heyday. I don't understand how anybody could do that. Again, I'm saying all in or all out. Not quitting in the middle of the season. That's my issue. And anybody who advocates that, I'm not down with it. I'm just not down with it. 888-SAY-ESPN. That is the number to call up this. 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. I'm, I'm just not. See, and this is the thing that kills me. Le'Veon Bell sits out. Doesn't want to get franchise tag. Sits out the season. You got some people who call them selfish. Antonio Brown. Displaying belligerence and petulance, no doubt. But it could have easily all been orchestrated to force his way out of Pittsburgh at the advice of his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, who's known to have done that from time to time, i.e. T.O. in the past. But we denigrate Antonio Brown. We sit here at every turn, and we're quick to highlight what we believe to be the selfish tendencies of an athlete, but then go on national television and advocate selfishness like it's a badge of honor just to get paid. I don't know how people cannot have a problem with that, but damn it, I do. I got a problem with it. I don't like it one bit. And there's something that needs to be said about that. You don't quit on the middle of the damn season. Unless you get hurt like Zion Williamson did last night. If he sat out from last night on, fine. But to advocate that he should just quit in the middle of the season if there was no injury and he was 100% healthy just to create, just to protect his stock as an NBA player in the middle of a damn season when you're pursuing a national championship, that don't make no sense. That's egregious. 
Let me take that back. That doesn't make any ethical sense. But that's just me. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. That was Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage in America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. We'll continue talking about the Zion Williamson thing. Are you an advocate of him quitting now? Were you an advocate of him quitting before this season, before the injury occurred? Or are you of the mindset that he should play all the way through this one year in collegiate basketball, try to win a national championship and get the hell up on out of here and go to the NBA draft? Where do you stand? Also, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and drama in the Steel City. Should Le'Veon Bell become a New York Jet? Or is there someplace else that should be more preferable in his eyes? 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Back with your calls and those subjects in just a second. By the way, do you have frequent heartburn? Like the kind where you have an acid stashed everywhere in case it pops up? You know what I mean. You keep some in your bag or your desk or your car or your nightstand. You have those chalky tablets ready for whenever and wherever heartburn strikes. Well, listen up. There's an easier way to deal with your heartburn. That's Prilosec OTC. Just one pill a day will last a full 24 hours with zero heartburn. Kick your acid habit. It's possible with Prilosec OTC. Use this directly for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn. It's not for immediate relief. Again, 888-SAY-ESPN. That is the number to call up. You are listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Learn what affects your credit scores and what you can do to 